I'm really excited to share this one with you because this was my best performance by far in the car. So I'd been chipping away at the times. You can see um, I just knocked about, I think that was 0.7 of a second off the time. Um, this is in qualifying and uh, so it was going quite well but this lap turned out to be my fastest lap. Um, helped I think by the fact that I've got you know two fast cars ahead of me so uh, the pink and white car is Mac Priestwood who I think he did the fastest time in the race actually. Um, very talented guy, very talented. Um, and then we've got, I don't know who this is actually, it could be Freddie Tatum, I'm not sure. Because um, Freddie used to drive a red and white car and I know his car's now completely black so this is probably him. Um, so bearing in mind you can see we're having to overtake, oh, there's another <laughs> completely black car. That's not Freddy though, um, yeah. So um, we're overtaking stuff, but I'm still doing a good good um, speed here. Um, yeah, so we're, we're qualifying here for a 90 minute endurance race with two compulsory pit stops. Uh, this is, yeah, this is just going fine. Um, you can see Max pulling away a bit, which is not surprising because he's just that much faster. You know, my fastest time round here would be in the 230s and his would be 227. So he's three seconds a lap quicker around the lap than I am. Yeah, I've gone a little bit wide there actually, which has made me tighten up on this piece, but it's not worked out too bad. I should have been further over to the left as I came around that left-hander. Now we're going round, uh, this is Corum, fast sweeping bend, where you're basically balancing the car on the accelerator. You can feel the back keeps twitching out and you see how it kicked then. The back kicked out just as I lifted. Um, you have to watch it because you can easily spin around there. Um, so crucial to get a good line through that last corner, that left hander. Okay, there's the chequered flag, so this is my last chance, and there you have it 2.30.50. So that's my qualifying time, and you can see here that makes me 20 seconds. I qualified 20 seconds ahead of Liam, which was a bit of a surprise. I just think he must have had a, a bad quality because he'd normally um, qualify a bit ahead of me. Now I actually started 21st and that's because um, the Petters uh, car didn't start so um, that pulled me up one more position. At lunch I sat with um, my friend Ben Wilshire. He, I used to race with him. Um, he's now racing for another team. Uh, he's in my race and he was partnered up with another driver who I'll tell you about in a second and the other driver was there and we got chatting and I was explaining to them that my starts were particularly poor and they started to uh, analyse me <laughs> and uh, probe all the areas that uh, might be causing problems with me starting and I could tell that the other lunch guest knew what he was talking about and it turns out it was David Brabham He's um, the son of Sir Jack and a Formula, a Formula One driver for Simtech years ago and also a Le Mans 24 hour winner. Yeah. Anyway, they gave me some pretty good advice. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it because that wouldn't really be fair because, uh, yeah, I, I'll just keep it to myself. But they gave me some really good advice and uh, which I did put into action in the race and it paid off which we'll see as the race starts. A trophy race starts with a rolling start and we're just going around the last bend before the start finish straight so we're coming up to the start you can see everybody started to speed up. Now in the past I've let myself fall too far back. You can see here I'm not ideally placed but the lights are still red, there they go, the lights have gone out so we're now racing. The difference this time is I'm immediately attacking, hence the attack uh, instruction on the dashboard. I decided just to go for it and try and overtake. Liam, 
who's just gone down the inside of me. I, I said he's slightly faster than me. He looks for every gap. Um, I just, yeah, it's. Um, I must admit, I could have probably um, blocked him off, but I'm not too worried at this stage. So at this point, I'm one place down on where I started uh, because of Liam's overtake. Now, normally at this point, I'd be six places down by now, and um, it would just then get worse and worse. That car was ahead of me anyway, I think, so um, I don't think I've lost anything there. To have a think about that maybe I have lost another position but I'm still happy with what I've got you know this is a 90 minute race and as the as the uh, clerk of the course reminds you in the driver briefing this is a 90 minute race you're not trying to win it at the first corner so that's um, quite quite good advice he's quite funny actually his name's Brendan I can't remember his second name got a problem here with my camera in that there's a bit of loose tape <laughs> It occasionally appears across the camera I'm really sorry about that that's what I'd done is I, I taped a foam pad behind my camera to stop it shaking you can see that the, the quality of the pictures are much better than they've been before where the camera has been shaking around so I'm really happy with the effect but unfortunately one of the pieces of tape broke and um, started to drift around in front of the camera which was a bit of a pain um, Okay, this is all going pretty good. Um, nothing drastic happening yet. Um, now I'm not, I'm not trying to hold position here. I I would attack if I could, um, but I'm not quite up to speed. The tyres are cold. I've got a full tank of fuel. We have to brim the cars um, because they can just about do it on one tank of fuel. Um, do the whole 90 minutes uh, and this is not going bad that's a good line through there so yeah it's going all right let's wind forward until we find something a bit more exciting okay you can see I'm still in the same position as I was um, but an opportunity is coming up so let's see what happens here everybody else is in the same position I don't think anything changed up to this point okay so Barlow's car has tried to go wide. Now the this car, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> he wasn't going to let me have that, so um, yeah, that that sort of put me off a bit. And you can see my speeds dropped and um, I've fallen back a bit. And oh, Liam! Oh yeah, of course he spun. I, I don't think we saw that bit. He spun further back and um, he, he's got a habit of getting me round Coram. I don't know how he does it because when I go round Coram, if I want to go really fast I can't do it on the inside of the track I have to go to the middle particularly if I want a good exit out of um, the left hander just after that long sweeping bend um, somehow he manages to squeeze down the inside um, but it's okay, we're now, I think we're about some total on one down, which is Liam. Um, otherwise everything else has remained the same. Um, yeah, because the Barlow's car span. Okay, let's uh, wind on a bit further. Okay, we rejoin. Liam's got a bit further ahead, you can just see him ahead, about three cars ahead. And I'm battling with this car, number 107. This battle went on for ages. Um, and it was a bit like the one I had in the um, sprint the day before with um, Sam, Ho Sam Holman. Um, yeah, it was um, it was good. He, I mean, I mean, you know, we saw that he chopped across me at bomb hole, but I'm not sure it was illegal. He didn't really do anything wrong, but um, it was pretty it relied on me backing out otherwise otherwise I would have hit him in the side um, now I'm trying to get him he's wary of me going down the inside of him he's sort of compromised himself a bit there but the trouble around here is you can get around that hairpin and get alongside them but then after that you've got nowhere to go because you you really need the inside line around this corner uh, which is Palmer um, so I struggled with this 
um, it's it, if you've seen the sprint race that I recorded the battle is very similar and I had pretty much the same ideas of how to go past but they weren't working um, and I had a number of times where I was alongside him um, and just could not pull off the, the complete manoeuvre you know okay let's let's wind forward So after training round behind him for a while I decided to go in the pits and he did the same thing. Now I don't know if, I can't see if I had the indicator on, yeah I think I did. I don't know if he did it to cover me off, if that's what his plan was or if it was just a coincidence that we both decided to do our first pit stop at that point. There's Liam's car just, a, just there you can see. Okay now one thing I'd asked them to do was change the tyres, the rear tyres because I found it quite skittish on the back. Uh, was that, should I have done that? Well, it did mean that I didn't, I was stopped for more than one minute. The compulsory pit stop is a 60 second compulsory pit stop and I'm fairly certain I was about 15 seconds over. So yeah, don't know how we view that. But um, anyway, it was, it was okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see it all plays out okay. Now one of the best things about that first session before the first pit stop was that I was banging in consistent lap times. I was doing 2.31s every lap except for we had a safety car which I didn't show. Um, and now I've just uh, snuck past uh, this guy. Um, they've just come out of the pit so um, you know not quite up to speed yet. And uh, yeah I've done put in quite a lot of work on this track. I've done quite a few test sessions or track days and I've done a lot of sim. I must have done hundreds and hundreds of sim laps. Um, and I've been trying my best to just do consistent lap times uh, rather than keep going for the fastest lap. Um, the beauty of doing consistent lap times is that you can then start to experiment with lines and determine what effect they're having. Um, on the um, overall time whereas if you just do random times you know uh, every lap it's very difficult for you to tell if you're making any improvements similarly with the car you know if you make an adjustment to the car if you can't do a consistent tap lap times then how do you know if the car's improving when you make a change um, okay so this is all going fine I think during this period I had a really quiet period all on my own so let's wind forward until we find something a bit more interesting. When I caught up to a large group of uh, cars, but the only reason is because it's the safety car train. <laughs> uh, we had another safety car period. It was quite prolonged actually. I think it went on for about seven laps. So um, I'm not gonna bore you with that. We'll, we'll wind forward, but there is one thing that happens during this period, which I will show you. Up ahead on the right side of the track you can see the safety car and they're waving us past um, as a block of, well, tail enders supposedly. Now I don't know if this is where the safety car con controversy occurred or if it was earlier in the previous safety car session. I've heard both cited as being the reason why so many of the guys who would normally finish ahead of me didn't, they finished after me. And, and after all of us, not just me, um, something was something was amiss, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if um, they made an almighty mistake on the, you know, in terms of managing the safety car. Um, and actually what they did was outside the rules. Or whether they just interpreted the rules and carried out the instructions as per the rules. A bit like Michael Massey I suppose <laughs> if you want to look at it like that um, not that I agree with that decision but uh, hey ho um, yeah so we all then went bombing around the track as fast as we could to catch up with the tail end of the um, safety car train um, so we'll move on a bit further anyway during this time it's important you keep your wits about you so look at the Marshall post on the left says safety car 
Right, now we come around this corner and watch the light board on the left. It's safety car, now it's gone green. Now we're racing. And there's a couple of things here. You want to stay up close behind the car in front throughout that whole period. And you know pretty much when the safety car is going to go in because the obstruction on the track has been removed. Um, in this case, it was a car in the barrier at turn one and you could see the car had gone and the, all the pickup uh, you know, equipment had uh, been removed. So we're now fully racing. So of course, safety car gives you the opportunity to come up right close behind other people. Um, and this one's worked out quite well for me. I've got a good exit out of uh, that left-hander, Murray's, and I'm able to uh, just cruise past that first car. Okay, now we're up against the car in front is the one that I was following for a long period before. Um, I've burnt off a lot of fuel, the car's much lighter now. So uh, oh, there's a car that's gone wide, so we've got him. Now I need to get this one done. 107. Yeah, he's driving very He's driving well, he's sort of following all the classic lines and not much opportunity now. I've got an opportunity here to try to go down the inside of him into Agostini. Oh, and I'm helped a bit there by that red car. Yeah. Okay, now he's still on the right hand side of me, you can just see him in my mirror. But that gets it done going around there okay so that's got that one done I'm a bit compromised here because I didn't couldn't move fully to the left in case he came past me on the inside so I've fallen back a bit behind the red car the red car is Paul White and I know it is because I raced him for the rest of the afternoon and he was he was really he's very fast and he's, he's difficult to pass um, but we'll, we'll see how this plays out just for a little while and then I'll, I'll move on again. Yeah, I've run a bit wide there. Not quite sure why, I've not got a real reason. Now I can get through here flat out. I, think, I don't know, I slightly lifted there, didn't I? Not sure why. You can get through bomb hole flat out as long as you um, don't apex too early and you have to get right down into the apex ah Pete Keane aha how did I let that happen I mean the guy's much quicker than me anyway but yeah I mean this ah going in for the second pit stop okay all right so um, I think the camera will stop at this point, so we'll have to move forward a little bit. Okay, so uh, good pit stop. Um, team did a good job, and I'm straight out, and I'm still behind Paul White. And by the way, the 107 car followed me into the pits, so I've stayed ahead of him, which is good. Um, and now, actually, this uh, battle with Paul uh, continues for the rest of the race. Um, and it was really good. Um, we had some, I tried again, I tried everything I could think of. I think I'm going to get some help here with uh, figuring out what options I have available to me. You'll see uh, as I wind this forward that there are some occasions where I get right up alongside Paul, but I just cannot get past him, I cannot complete the manoeuvre. Um, we both, in this phase of the race. I mean in the previous section I was sticking in 231s repeatedly. In this phase I did 230s one after another and eventually did a 229. Now I think both of us could have done 229s pretty continuously but because we're battling of course we're we're not taking optimal lines around the corners and I think he could have gone faster and I could have gone faster but you know this is racing, so um, it's not so bad.
Yeah, this is going okay. Um, actually catching him slightly, but obviously nowhere near enough to get past. He's gone in. He's taken an inside line there. He's, I think he was probably worried I was going to go down the left of him into that uh, left-hander. Now I've lost some a bit there. There I am going flat out through bomb hole, which is good. See the car moving around. That's what mine would have looked like that as well. The front and the back squirm as you're going round there. And then you need to sight that apex and the exit to get a good run out of there. Yeah, see we're, we're pretty evenly matched, aren't we? That's why it was so difficult to get past. The only thing you can hope is either he makes a mistake or um, something like this happens where another car gets involved and that helps you. Let's see what happens here. So it did sort of help me, but he came in quite tight. I had to take a really tight line around there and of course that's lost me a load of speed. Um, now I'm going to try a late apex here, I think. No, that's not that late, is it? No, that's not. No, I didn't. <laughs> I lie. Obviously wasn't thinking about that at that time. I'm trying to think who that is in front. Is that 73? I think it is. So that's the um, Tibbetts car, and they're fast as well. Um, yeah, and I think uh, this is going to turn into a bit of a train because we're all going about the same speed. If that had been a slower car, that might have given me more of an opportunity to get pulled, but this is going to be difficult. I'm catching him down the straight, but it's not good enough. That's a that's a very wide line, young man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's because he's coming tight into the second one. He's run off the side of the track slightly. Now he did get demoted um, for track track limit violations. Um, he he got some time penalties. I think he got a five second time penalty, which put him behind um, me and Paul at the end. Um, so that's the thing with this sort of racing, endurance racing, it's not just about the outright speed. Um, it's also about thinking about the whole picture, about the time penalties, about what you're doing, you know, are you risking the car um, and things like that. And I think that's why I'm better at this than I am at sprinting. I think this all, you know, I, t I tend to play a probability game. You know, if I keep my driving clean, don't get the car smashed up, even if I have to back out of moves like this one. <laughs> oh, look at that. See, I just can't get the drive out of there to... I could have slammed across in front of him, actually, couldn't I? But this is a case in point, you know. Um, if I do that, you know, then I smash my car up. I might not be able to complete the race. And I think at the level I'm at at the moment, I can play this probability game and it, it's pulling me up the order. You know, I'm gradually getting further and further closer to the front, but eventually I'm gonna to have to take more risks with the car and more risks of spinning out, not risks with my health and safety. So, you know, um, in the time I've been racing, no one has been killed in UK motorsport. Um, but, uh, for example, my daughter started doing triathlon and in the same period, five, uh, UK triathletes have died um, in events so no sport is without its risks but um, I will need to take a bit more risk to get towards the front
it's, it's going okay but as you can see we're all pretty evenly matched I mean Paul's dropping back a bit from um, seven, car 73 but that's really because he's fighting with me um, if he wasn't fighting with me he'd probably be fighting with them and they wouldn't be getting away um, so it is a very evenly matched race at this point between the three of us Okay. Oh, he's gone very wide there. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't make any mistakes that would give me such a big advantage that I could creep past. Yeah, that's not a late apex. Yeah, I sort of tried to push it up the curb, but I'm going too slow at this point. That's not good. Yeah, let's move forward. Okay, now we do have the involvement of another car. Um, we seem to have caught up with a, another car. Now I've let myself... I had a couple of laps where I, I don't know what happened, I dropped back, which was a bit unfortunate because this would be about the time I need to be right up the back of Paul. So the Tibbetts car has gone past this um, I don't know if you'd call it a back marker, I'm not quite sure who it is. Who's that? 83, that's one of the Team Hamster cars, isn't it? Is that um, James? Let's have a look. No, that's uh, Elliot Bridgman and Thomas Littlechild. I remember him from the sprint race. So we've all gone past him, but you know, we're now back in the same old position, so let's uh, wind forward a bit. Okay, well nothing's changed for like a few laps and so now I'm going to move out wide and try and take a late apex here. He's still going fast though, you can see I'm not, I'm not really close enough. So I'll try and inside move down Agost to Agostini. Yeah, so um, yeah I just the line's too tight and I, short of me smashing into him, you know, I can't get the drive out of there um, to uh, make the move stick. Under the pressure he's gone wide, but you know, even when he goes wide, and he did on a few occasions, he didn't panic. He just, you know, carefully steered it back onto the track and um, did what was needed. Now the three of us are catching up with Sam Holman in front, but I think this is all too late, if I remember rightly. Um, we're getting towards the latter end of the race. You can see on the um, on the best time I've got a 2.29.55, which was my best time of the day. Um, Paul did the same. I think he did an almost identical time to that. Um, so you can tell that we were pretty we were pretty evenly matched. Yeah, it's really difficult when there's, you know, there are two or three of you who are evenly matched, you know, how do you get past, short of someone making a mistake. Um, yeah, the Tibbetts car has got away a bit, but as I said before, it's really because Paul and I are battling. It goes run wide again, well, I nearly ran wide. Um, but you know he doesn't he doesn't panic so often what you see is people try and yank it back onto the track really quickly they've still got their foot in and so the car just spins wildly and loads of uh, dust comes out of the back of it and yeah I think I could do a better job around there around turn one let's get a bit more speed Okay, so the Tibbetts car has gone past Sam. I think, I'm not actually sure if it's Sam driving in that green car. Um, but I think he's a lap down anyway, so he's not. we're not racing him. Let me just check that. Yeah, we're not racing him. Yeah, so I tried it again, but 
still not working. Sometimes you can force people to go out too wide there if you really hammer it into there and they try and copy but perhaps take a slightly different line and they end up on the grass. But um, Paul's not fall falling for that one. Yeah, we both took a good line around there so you know we're going to go down the straight evenly matched again. Difficult to see what's going to change, isn't it? Yep, I could do with some advice here. Answers on a postcard, please, or in the comments below. What, what, what could I have done here to get past Paul? Okay, we're coming up. Is this the last lap, or is that the... I think that might be the chequered flag. Yep, there you go, end of the race. <laughs> I was, I couldn't believe it was the end of the race. It had gone so quickly, and I just thought, oh, I could have done with another five laps. Although I'm not quite sure what I would have done differently, but yeah, but great fun. Now um, let's have a look at some of the times and my finishing position. At the top here we see my times. What I really like about this is the, you know, you can see the first few laps before the first safety car. Um, I'm sticking in 231s. Uh, I then have a pit stop. I've done a couple more 231s. I then get stuck behind the safety car again. And then we're into the sort of second half of it on the right hand side. And then I start sticking in 230s uh, with a 229 there. Uh, that was the best part. It was the consistency, which I was really pleased with. I mean, the times are so much better. At the bottom, where I've got the car number 64, you can see my times for, for the same track from last year. Not only are they much slower, they're all over the place. Um, so um, it was the consistency I was really looking for and that I can build on that, you know. So um, that was all good. At the end of the race, I was waved into the scrutineers bay to have the car weighed, which is something that's never happened to me before. And I was thinking, this is a bit strange. And I got out of the car and um, Giles, who's one of the um, 750 Motor Club um, managers said, well done, Paul, great result. And I said, where did I come? And he said, seven. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I was seventh on the road, but uh, classified sixth after after time penalties had been awarded. Um, yeah. Okay, so there is something about to do with the um, the safety car. If you look at the people behind me, a lot of them um, should have been in front of me. Um, but I did beat a lot of my sort of peers, and I'm pretty convinced I would have been high top fifteen. Um, I wouldn't have lost that many places. If you notice in eighth, you've got Matthew Highcock. Um, well, Matthew would would have normally won the race or come second and Mac Priestwood there in number 11, you know, 11th, he should be either on the podium, number one or two on the podium. So, you know, there's definitely something strange happened, but you know, I'm gonna take it, I don't care. <laughs> it was a great result. And as I said, the best thing was the consistency. And I'm just really looking forward to uh, Croft the next race and uh, try and repeat, you know, the consistency, even if I don't quite get the uh, top 10 finish. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you on the next one.